Okay, folks, so this is pretty much the last rendition of one of these little solar generator cart boxes that I'm gonna build, and I'm hoping that this is gonna be the last that I need because I'm gonna integrate a lot of things that I've learned that I kinda wanted after building my first two. So as you can see, this one's a lot deeper and I did that because I left myself enough room to expand this. I'm eventually gonna wanna put two 200 amp batteries in here, but I'm gonna have enough room underneath to store at least two and link together. And then up top, I built, and guys, this is just an extremely simple type box. I didn't show you how to build this because I just scrumbled through my garage and found a bunch of miscellaneous plywood. I got half inch, I got three quarters inch, I've got some particle board. It's just a mix of just a bunch of junk wood that I had. So, uh, but up top, since this is gonna be so much deeper, I went ahead and installed a hinged top and I'll bring you in closer here in a second, but this is gonna be where I'm gonna put most of my wiring and close the top and that way it's not gonna be really seen. And I am going to be installing some 12 volt goodies on this. So already I've got some switches and I've got some 12 volt outlets. I've got some USB charging outlets and I've got just a regular uh, cigarette style charging outlet right here. Um, I'm gonna be installing, I guess you can call it security lighting, perimeter lighting, I don't know, like, but I got a couple of these little LED lights that I'm going to install up here that in the event, you know, there truly is a power outage and I've got to have light, I'm gonna have two of these little light bars up there, of course, running off of the 12 volt. So with the 12 volt, of course, I've got a fuse box. I've upgraded this one to a Victron 130 charge controller because I plan on running a minimum 400 watts on this with the ability to expand just a little bit more. So I upgraded to the 130 um, and I'm gonna be using this Yin Leader, whatever, 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. So we're gonna be uh, using this, this is the biggest inverter that I have. Uh, most of mine are 1500 watt, but this is a 2000 watt, 4000 watt surge capability, pure sine. So that's gonna be used somewhere up here, but I'll kind of walk you guys through my process of figuring out how I'm going to lay all this stuff out. You know, bus bars. And then on this one, I will be using a solar disconnect switch and also a battery shut off switch. So folks, that's basically it for just this box. Now there's going to be a lot of time lapse stuff and I'll, and I'll stop in the middle here and there to kind of show you what I've done and where I'm going. Hopefully, you know, figure out what's best as I go in terms of layout and wiring and, and all that stuff. So this might change as I, as I go throughout the build. Folks, hang tight and I'll walk you through this build. Okay, so for this station, I'm gonna be switching over to uh, what they call feral terminating ends. It's just these little guys. And it does, of course, require a special crimping tool, but this was only like, I think 20 bucks and it came with quite a few of these different size ferrules. It just provides a much better, I'll show you what it looks like, but, but it's supposed to provide a much better connection point to these type of things where you have to, you know, insert them and tighten them down. So to start off with, this is going to be my solar cable extensions that's going to go into the bottom of my solar disconnect switch. And you're just gonna kind of squeeze it on, twist it on, and you insert the ferrule into this and squeeze down. And look at that, it makes a perfect square and that's gonna have a much better connection in this thing. Perfect. Now for the negative side, same thing. I've got the ferrule installed already. I'm just gonna put it inside this crimper tool. It's 
squeeze down. And perfect. These ferrules should provide a much better connection to everything. Now I can get a couple of small pieces of lead wire to connect the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive to the PV side. And that'll complete that part. And let me show you folks this too. I did go ahead and get a different kind of battery monitor. So I picked this up from, I don't know, L-N-E-X. So I've got to cut a hole right here and I'm going to have this sitting somewhere, you know, in the vicinity of this area. So I'm going to go ahead and mark and cut and get that sorted out. All right, a few tries later, we got it. Well gang, here I stand right now as far as the build of this solar generator cart. Um, I'm still waiting on a few more things. It seems like that's always the, the case where I don't have the right battery terminal lugs for the right post. So I'm waiting on a few things to arrive. So I'm just gonna walk you through what I've done so far. And hopefully you can tell that the, the heart of this unit is going to be the Chin's 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So I'll be talking a little bit more about this battery in a little bit later down the video, but that's what I'm gonna be using for this. Now, if you really wanna go research this a whole lot, again, and, I've, and I keep saying his name, Will Prowl, um, Hobotech, they've all done really, really thorough breakdown reviews of this battery. I'm not gonna do it because I want to use this battery. I don't wanna demolish it, but um, very, very good, extremely good reviews on this Chins battery. Again, hopefully I'm gonna end up to be able to use two of these things, which is why I built this cart the way that I did, so that I can link two of them together in the future to create either 400 amp hour battery or a 24 volt system. Haven't decided which way I wanna go yet, because if I go 24 volt, I'll have to change out the inverter and a couple of other things, so I'm probably just gonna keep it at 12 volt. This is where my setup is now, so I've got my my charge controller, my solar disconnect switch, my fuse. I've got the uh, 2000 watt inverter set up here and I'll show you guys in closer, but, but inside this little cabinet here is where all of my <laughs> wiring is. So it is not pretty right now, but I will go ahead and show, show it to you what it looks like, but I, I've still got a lot of cleaning up to do. And then of course my, where I'm gonna keep my batteries is gonna be down here and I will have to put casters on this cart. And then here are my, what I'm gonna call emergency lighting, perimeter lighting, I guess. So in the event that if I have this at an off-grid cabin and I need lighting to see at night, um, I've got these floodlights. These are not the spot, these are flood to eliminate outdoors. And these are only 18 watts a pair. So these don't pull a whole lot of wattage and I wouldn't plan on running these all night anyway, but that's why I have these lights up here, just in case. I'll bring you in closer and I will show you what's in here now. Keep in mind, this is not done. And got my perimeter lighting and that is just wired up very, very simply in the back. And that is going down into an access hole into this cabinet. Um, I've got my solar cable extensions drilled through the back and those come out here. 
those go up into a solar disconnect switch and into my solar charge controller. Coming out of my solar charge controller from my battery ports, I've got one going to a 40 amp circuit breaker, the positive side, and I've got the negative going down into this cabinet. Here, I've got my 2000 watt inverter, and right now I only have one positive two gauge cable because I'm waiting on another lug, but I've got the two gauge going down. I drill two holes for those going down into the cabinet. So that's kind of the setup for up here. Now, once you open this up, <laughs> be prepared. It looks worse than it is, I promise, guys. But again, this is not very clean. So this cable right here is coming directly from my inverter. It's going down into a positive bus bar. Another terminal on the positive bus bar is coming over to a inline fuse. And then the other end of that inline fuse is going to a battery disconnect switch, which is very simple to set up. It's just two bolts. Coming out of my battery disconnect fuse is another two gauge wire going down through a three quarter inch hole I drilled out. And that's going to be the lead that's going to get hooked into my battery post. Also coming out of the positive bus bar, I've got this 10 gauge wire coming off of one post and going across and going to my 12 volt fuse panel. And this is, well, let's start with negative. So again, negative is gonna be just the same, except I don't have it, but I'm gonna have a negative two gauge wire coming from this post on the inverter, going down through that hole and down through the bottom. And that's going to eventually be ran to this negative bus bar. But right now the negative bus bar has a negative two gauge cable that is not yet hooked up, but it's fished up through. And that negative cable comes up here and connects to one side of my battery shunt. And then the other side of the battery shunt is connected directly to my negative bus bar. And again, this little eight gauge cable negative is going through and up. And then that's what this is going into my solar charge controller. So this is hooked up to my negative bus bar directly. I also have the negative side of my 12 volt fuse panel hooked up to my negative side of my bus bar and all of this small 14 gauge wiring you see on the sides this is all from from the from these and you might see this resistor so i'm going to test something out i don't know if it's going to work i saw it on another video but this is a little momentary push button switch and my plan is is that when i have this whole system shut off when i turn this battery cutoff switch off i have that switch wired i'm going to have it wired with these two positive leads and i'm going to attach them directly to both posts underneath that battery shutoff switch. Battery cutoff switch turned off. I can come up here and press it, and hopefully it's gonna pre-charge all the capacitors in this before I switch that battery cutoff switch on to eliminate any type of spark whatsoever because I'm hoping that this switch right here is going to kind of help pre-charge this guy. So once I get all of the other material that I'm waiting for, uh, I'm going to get this all wired up and hopefully looking a little bit neater than this rat's nest of throw up wire. Um, I will show you guys how it works and then we'll do a little runtime test or a, or a capacity type test on this Chins battery. So this is my setup right now. I'm going to get this thing wired up and then give you guys a final tour of it when it's complete. Well gang, I got the solar cart model 3.0 completed. Finally got all the hardware that I needed and got everything wired up. So I'll take you folks for a quick tour of this thing, but I'm pretty happy with it. And again, I got the Chins 200 amp hour battery. That's kind of gonna be the heart of this thing. And again, I'm not gonna tear it down. I'm not gonna rip it apart, but we'll run a couple of uh, the highest draw appliances that I can plug into it here in the garage and test it out. But but the Chins has gotten great reviews and from people that actually tear apart these things and look inside them. And it's got the 2000 cycles to 0% discharge, 5000 cycles to I believe 50% discharge. So it's gonna last you years and years and years because we're probably, at least I'm not going to use this thing every day down to 0%. I, I should be able to get years and years of service out of this Chins battery. And I can run up to 200 amps off of this thing. So the internal BMS on this will allow draws up to 200 amps. And I can charge up to 100 amps on this thing. So it, it's more than adequate for anything that I would need. And again, I'm hoping to get a, a second 200 amp hour battery and link them together. I haven't decided if I want to do parallel or series yet. That's the goal. That's why this cart was built this way. But but, and then, I've, you know, I've got the one switch right here that's gonna turn these lights on for perimeter lighting if I ever need it. But let's take a closer look up here and you can kind of see some of the dials and gauges and stuff. So let's give that a shot. All right, so here she is. Chin's battery. Got my switch panel here and my USB ports to charge. So we've got quick charge, two quick charge ports 
and we've got a 12 volt style cigarette charger. And then right now this is the only switch that I have and it's running those. But obviously expansion options here for all those. Uh, this new little monitor I really like. Um, it shows the actual amount of, an estimated amount of hours until that battery is depleted. It is probably not 100% accurate, but it's more than I've had on my other two that I've built. And you can see this is pretty much calibrated. It's at 199 amp hours or 100%, but it's a neat little, uh, little display. And then coming up here, again, you've already seen all this stuff. I've got this circuit breaker turned off because I don't have any solar panels hooked up to that controller yet, but we've got the solar disconnect switch. This is actually per code. Uh, which I didn't realize um, if you're actually going to install this in your home, you have to have a solar disconnect switch. I don't really care about this unit, but I went ahead and put it on. And then the Yen Leader 2000 continuous watt pure sign inverter. We'll open up this lid here, and this is as clean as this wiring's gonna get. I kind of gave up on it, but it's not too, too bad. And again, it might look worse than it actually is. It still works. So. There's my battery disconnect switch, so that, that is off now and nothing works. But let me show you, so that battery is off and my little momentary on button works. So watch this, I'm gonna slightly press it and it turns on those lights. So just enough to, to what I'm thinking, charge that inverter, the capacitors in that inverter, so I don't get any sparks. And there we go turn that off so let's turn on the inverter and let's let's get some things running on it just to make sure everything looks good and then we'll call it a day all right so let's start off with the heat gun test plug this into the inverter things turned on and let's turn it on low actually let me close the garage door so you guys can actually see this there we go hopefully that helps well, let's turn this on again and according to my battery monitor, I'm pulling around 450 watts, 35 amps. Let's boost it up to high. We're on high. Okay, so we're on high on this. We're pulling 1,555 watts. We're holding steady at 12.9 volts, outputting 119 volts on the inverter, according to the inverter. Let's turn on some lights. Looks good. I hate running these tests with a heat gun because it's so hot and this thing just is like sitting in an oven. It's a good test for these batteries and the inverter and the whole system to make sure everything's working properly. Cabling feels fine. Yeah, I think we're good. Close that back down. So guys, that's really it for this final build of this little cabinet. I hope it gave you some ideas if you want to build one of these things, you know, store this in your garage, in a shed, whatever. Um, you don't always have to put these things up on the wall. Like I see a lot of people build, you know, I'm going to throw casters on this so I can move it around if I have to. And it does take up floor space, but again, it's more mobile than if it's on the wall. I can move this to inside if I have to. So that's why I kind of like building them on these carts. So yeah, guys, so that is it for this little cart. Hope you found that build uh, any bit useful and slightly bit entertaining. So guys, until next time, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.